This is the entrance to Adelaide Castle. The main courtyard, I can't wait to show you this. Uh, there's admissions, you're ready for this? It's $2 to get in. It's worth much more than that. This place is absolutely spectacular. If you're an architecture buff, a history buff, and want to see this beautiful place that was, the construction began in 1935, you are in for some kind of a treat. Right in the middle of Huntington Beach State Park is Adelaide Castle. This was the home of Archer and Anna Huntington. Uh, Archer's dad was a big railroad magnet and shipping magnet. And when he um, inherited his father's fortune, he became a very large philanthropist. And this was their winter home for about six plus years. I've heard so much about this. I can't wait to show this to you. First stop we're gonna make is in the carriage house. And uh, this talks about Archer Milton Huntington and his wife, Anna Hyatt Huntington. And uh, all their philanthropic activities. And this talks about their sanctuary in the dunes. And I can't wait to see this place. Look at this. Lots and lots, there's some old pictures from back in the day. Lots of history here, lots of history. Another little interesting tidbit, this area was actually turned over to the federal government, U.S. Army Air Corps during World War II and ran a radar station here during that period. Protecting the coastline, look at this. I can't wait to go see inside, let's go. So if you think we are early into our RV life, this is the Huntington's vehicles as they were getting older. Yeah, that is a converted bus that they would travel. Can you see how old that car is? I wish I could get more information on this. That's absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. So as you come through the main entrance here, this is where they would have come from what they call the long road. And I'm gonna slowly turn around here you have a courtyard on the right. Then this area here that takes you over to the main residence and then the courtyard to the side. And this is the, uh, I don't know, I've, I've seen grand entrances before, but this would have been your view as you walk into the property with these two courtyards on the, I guess you would call this the north and south side of the property. And uh, this is the tower. I'm not sure if you had access back in the day. I can't tell. And then as we come into the main residence, the residence is horseshoe shaped. This would have been your, your view through the entranceway. I've never seen anything like this before in my life. It's incredible. And then this would have been your greeting foyer. Bedrooms are down that way. Dining. And then this was servants' quarters down that way who actually worked here on the property. Incredible. You'd have a nice roaring fire waiting for them in the winter. Amazing. There's the open house that's down there. But I think we'll just start talking around the courtyard here. I want you to see this. There's some really interesting things about this property. I'd already talked about uh, what went on during World War II. But uh, this was the Huntington summer home and they only lived here or came here six times. Let's walk on down here. Look at this ironwork. Okay. I've shared this before in the past that Back in my college days, I worked in the ornamental iron business. And this type of craftsmanship just trips my trigger. I'm telling you, look at this. This is all hand forged. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. And what I want you also to see is, this is a Moorish design. Look at these walls. Uh, all exposed mortar. I think you call that brick masons. You can straighten me out if I'm incorrect. 
but uh, there's a, uh, a courtyard with that centerpiece, the tower there in the middle. All right, we'll uh, start going inside and start looking at some of these rooms and such here. Look at this. Now, I wish I could share with you what just happened. Uh, you'll notice these windows are open and the way this place is designed is for it to be able to pull the breeze off the ocean. And look how thick these walls are. You can see they're probably maybe 12 inches thick, three, four layers of brick, something like that. This is the master bedroom. And uh, the breeze through here, I imagine the temperature dropped maybe uh, 10, 15 degrees. Amazing. And yes, this is Anna's bath. And you can tell during the period, every place had a fireplace for heat and natural convection for the coolness. How about that? So again, this is the master bedroom. I showed you Anna's bath. This is Archer's bath. They had opposing bathrooms. Again, you can see they had their fireplaces to get it warm. And he had a shower. That would have been the water closet back in the day. Early 1900s now, think about that. And uh, just interesting. This looks like maybe, here's his wardrobe room. Look at that. That's something. We'll continue on here. This, uh, this was Archer's study. So he had his own private study. Look at this. Amazing. I'll try to give you the spance here. Maybe um, 16 by 24, something like that. Notice the design of the fireplace, how they had uh, entrances and exits to be able to pull the hot air through the brick. That's pretty innovative. Look at this. Another little small room. I don't know what this was. Pretty cool. Look at this. This was the indoor studio. This is where Anna did all of her sculpture work. Look at this, this place is huge. Oh, I want you to see this too. This is quite amazing. Look at the uh, winded atrium. Look at that. And my understanding, it is out here in this courtyard, she only sculpted animals. And she would have animals brought here for periods of time so she could study their bone structures and so forth. This was her outdoor studio. And across from us where you see those doors is the stables. Let's see what else we can find. These folks are rather affluent, but again, Mr. Huntington, Archer Huntington, made the statement that he did not earn the money that his father had made, that he had inherited. And he was purely a philanthropist and gave it away. And this was the secretary's bedroom, their personal secretary. She had a bath. The tub is separate than the water closet. How about that? And notice these views. I don't know what it would have been like in the 19, early 1900s, but I can hear, I can hear the ocean. It's just right on the other side of those trees. You can see maybe those folks walking over there to it. And then as she stepped out of, this is the secretary's bedroom. So she stepped out. She viewed one side of the courtyard. Let's see what else we have down here. This was the library, so I imagine this was full of books during the day. And uh, looks like the door has been sealed off. We've got some structural issues, but they had an outdoor area. They could probably enjoy the cooler days. I think they only use this as a winter residence, if I read it correctly. 
We'll continue down this hallway here. <laughs> this place is quite the maze. Uh, this is the sunroom. Look at this. They can enjoy the doors being opened up. And for the cooler periods, it looks like that's been rebuilt. Fireplace during the day. So it looks like newer brick. Look at this. And if you see, that's called the straight road all the way at the end that came from the highway. It's over there. What a piece of architecture. This is incredible. Oh, a water closet. <laughs> gotta go, you gotta go. Look at this. You'll notice there's no wood in this structure. This is all brick and concrete, even the ceilings, even there's no wood. Reason being is Archer was in San Francisco for the earthquake and the fires and said he wouldn't live in a wooden structure again. Breakfast room, I'm gonna assume that the kitchen is nearby. Formal dining room. Notice it's small. It's because there's no guest bedrooms. This was a private residence and no one got invited to come from my understanding. Looks like this might have been the pantry. Servants living room. Not bedroom, they had their own private space. That's kind of rare. My understanding is Archer hired over 100 people. The depression was going on during the period and he wanted to do everything he could help folks with. Look at this. Here's the kitchen. It would have been modest. Two wood burning coal stoves, a gas powered refrigerator, a large ice box, and a hooded grill. And that was it. You can see where the sink was. Pantry area. And this was the ice box. Look at this thing. Wow. Amazing. Notice all the floors are brick. This place is really built to withstand the elements, I'm telling you. Wow. And then you've got that courtyard over there. We'll walk over to that in just a minute. This is the servants' quarters. Which I want you to notice is how many people were here to help them maintain the estate. One bedroom. Two bedrooms. Some type of storage and pantry here. Another servant's bedroom. Another servant's bedroom. All the servant's bedrooms, you can tell, they've got fireplaces for the winter. More storage. More storage. Another servant's bedroom. Another servant's bedroom. Servant's bath room area. And this would have been the laundry room. Matter of fact, this is one of the larger rooms in the facility. Amazing. And this was the housekeeper's room. It's the larger of all. This must have been the, the boss. And I bet they have their own private bath. They do. So this was kind of like the head honcho. Wow, look at this. Kind of the head honcho here. Okay, this is gonna be interesting. <laughs> Low tech. This is the laundry drying yard. As you notice, right over there across the way, 
is the laundry area and steps that came down. <laughs> Well, that's interesting. And then here's the other side of the courtyard. Look at this. What an absolutely stunning property. Just spectacular. Is this gorgeous? What a place. Mm -hmm.